Welcome back to my channel, the Mystery Channel 33. I'm here with some more missing women shooting and men cases. We are here to break the codes that we see in these. We are here to see where their bodies are located, if they know. And we also here to see they are live, deceased body suit is changing, and think to see your misidentity. The Irish should know who's involved, so let's begin. This is about my nephew, Christopher Bensby. This how he looks, and this how he would have looked it, okay? Okay, backstory, let me put it in. I can't find it, though. But it is season one, episode 11, okay, where, you know, he was in the streets or whatever. So, my grandma asked my brother, Stacks, if he should talk to him now. He said no, because he was busy. Loosely, kids in the youth always come to me anyway. So, but he wanted to talk to me anyway. So, that's why my brother said that. But loosely, I talked to them anyways. Um, so, after we got done talking, um... So anyways, after we got done having the meeting in the youth shelter, everybody came out and then fired, then shot star being fired, he got shot like that. But I think they also took his body as well, okay? My sister will talk more about it, okay? So let's begin. Real name, Christopher Milton Densby. Nicknames, Shoo Shoo or Shoo Shoo. Chris, location, Manhattan, New York. Date, May the 18th, 1989. Occupation, none. <clears throat> Date of birth, March the 30th, 1987. Heights, two seats. Weight, 30 pounds. Marital status, he was a minor. Characteristics, black male with black hair and brown eyes. He has a birthmark shaped like a figure eight on his right arm and a bone scar on his thigh. Yes, at the time of his disappearance, he was wearing a blue jacket, a floor print shirt, blue jeans, and green and white sneakers. I'm hearing, yeah, some were going to colors as well. The case details. Christopher Dansby is the son of Milton Westcott Robbins and Addison Dansby. In the 1980s, Addison, her mother, Elizabeth Manley, her siblings, and her cousins all lived in the same apartment building in the Martin Luther King Jr. Towers Complex in Central Harlem, Manhattan, New York. She says it takes a village to raise a family, and that's what it was. True. I mean, all the kids... Used to come to us, okay, for help, okay, even our own kids. Reporter Mary Murphy says the 1980s was considered a bad time for New York City with robberies and assaults, etc. True. There was a lot of junkies and drug addicts in the streets, yes. When police inspector Ken Lydell arrived in the area in 1989, Harlem was one of the tough areas. He says it was a very violent place. However, there was also a lot of working people there that was just trying to survive. He says there was a lot of decent folks there. He can watch the show ER on Max TV, okay? Valerie Manley, a Harlem resident and relative of Christopher's, says there was a lot of children and families there. There was people trying to go to work, come home, and make a living for their families. They were striving to do the best they could do could for their families. Valerie remembered that the community was close knit. Who he was. Also, he came back, but then he kept dying. Okay, you can see him in in um. You can see him in Crossroads. That was him that got neutralized. You can see him on our album cover. Okay, you can see him on that show. Okay, um. Yes, um. We were all working in the hospital. Okay, it was all nurses and doctors. In 1989, Allison was 26 and had two sons, three-year-old Levon and two-year-old Christopher. Levon's nickname was Pancho and Christopher's was Shoo Shoo, C-H-O-O dash C-H-O-O. Their aunt and Allison's sister, Carolyn Manley, say she still calls them by their nicknames. True. She says Christopher was very attached to her as well as Allison. Yes, he and Allison were very close. Caroline say he was he would not just go with anybody exactly like I ain't gonna lie boys and girls will only come to us females about problems okay even though the streets is a man thing but they would come to us okay <clears throat> but for he would not go to anybody okay when Allison would walk into a room he would just light up she says he liked it to cuddle true by the age of two he was already talking yes. He would say words like mama and Levon. 
Christopher always wanted to be outside. Yes, that's probably why. Okay. They don't just because you like to be outside don't mean you like to be in the streets, okay? But you know, back then the streets was you were always outside, okay? That don't mean you were doing shit, but you know. Allison says that there were one of the things they did. They would go outside, sit on the bench, and walk over to the park. The park was actually part of the complex. It was located at 113th Street and Lee Knox Avenue, yes. On Thursday, May the 18th, 1989, at around 6.30 p.m., Allison, Christopher, and Levon walked to the park. Crew. They went down the slide a couple of times. She says Christopher had a blast that day. I had a dream about a park, too. He was not able to go down the big slide by himself, so she slid down with him. She says he relayed the slides. Elizabeth, Caroline, and some other relatives also came to the park that day. Caroline said Christopher was always happy to be outside. She remembers it was hot that day, so everybody was in the park. It was very crowded, okay? But yeah, in Crossroads, the video, he was actually in the casket, and that thing came and got him taken to hell or whatever. But he came back, though, okay? Those are other sons. Those are my sister, other sons, my other nephews. Caroline says she can never forget that day. It is something that had lived with her ever since. Who? Allison says that after she and Christopher walked around the park, she decided to go to the store to buy crabs for dinner. So, I'm here some going to Crips or something like that. Okay. That's what they going to say. Caroline says that that was a normal thing they did. They would go to the park, then go to the store, and get the kids something. Since Allison did not have Christopher's stroller, she left him and leave on with Elizabeth. Several other adults were with them, crew, before leaving the park. So, you know, the, the, the youth center with a lot of people in there. Okay, that's why they're saying that. So, you know, park's always busy. Allison hugged and kissed Christopher goodbye. That was me. She told him she would be right back. He told her, I love you, mommy. Okay, auntie. 30, well, you know, you can still call people. That's not your mama, mama, okay? 30 minutes later, Allison returned to the park. Yeah, it was a normal thing. She remembers it was still crowded. She started looking around for Elizabeth and her sons. Elizabeth and Levon were there, but Christopher was not. She started asking around to see if anyone had seen him. The people at the park started looking too, saying, oh, he's here. Allison kept looking around, but she did not see him. She walked around the park, but she still did not see him. A lot of kids got killed in, that, killed in the streets, okay, when they came out. Allison asked Caroline where Christopher was. Caroline said she had him one minute but someone else had him the next. She says there was about five of them in the park watching the kids. Who? One of them would remember seeing him playing with a red ball. Okay, so, you know, one of them, the crib, the blood, or whatever, you know, the fake one. However, he had not brought one to the park that day. Elizabeth says she saw him playing with a young cousin. She looked around for a few minutes to talk to a friend. When she looked back, Christopher was gone. The cousin says he and Christopher went their separate ways while playing. He did not see him after that. The adults split up to search for him. Some people went to the opposite side of the park. Allison went to the 115th Street side. And they continued to search. Allison realized something was wrong. She started getting really anxious and nervous. Yes, she did not know what had happened to Christopher. She ran up and down the nearby streets but could not find any traces of him. Caroline says it was overwhelming, frightening, and shocking. <clears throat> They was all panicking. One minute Christopher was dead, the next minute he was gone, okay? Um, yes, like I said, he survived a lot of attempted murders or whatever. The last the last time he got killed was during the um, Valentine Massacre with my son, Yummy, and my nieces, and everybody got killed, okay? The police was called. Officers rushed to the park. Inspector Ladeo said everyone took the case seriously. It was an all-hands type of police job. You know, the first few minutes and hours of a child's disappearance was the most important. The first step was the initial canvas of the area. Who police was on the streets asking passers by in the hopes that someone saw something out of the ordinary. They also did a building by building search. They knocked on doors and offered a reward for information. They looked in apartments for anything untoward, such as blood or signs of a struggle or violence. Who there were 10 towers in the complex. I'm hearing no. Each one has about 14 floors. Each floor has multiple apartments. Who? It was difficult to search the entire complex for Christopher in a timely fashion. Inspector Lydell notes that there was a lot of people in this relative small area. He says the magnitude of the search that day and the following days would have been a lot of work. Yes, but when there is a missing child, they have to do what needs to be done. 
Caroline remembers them being all cops all around the place. Then there were helicopters stuck in the area. Yes, she says what was happening was unbelievable. The search area for Christopher was 24 blocks. It was fairly close to Harlem Mirror, a shallow man-made pun. Located at the north end of Central Park, yes. Police feared he may have fallen into it and drowned. Scuba team searched it, but nothing was found. Hmm. Um. Okay, she wanted me to just go down. Three months passed, Rosa Glover said she had no idea that a boy had gone missing in the park until her son, Shane Walker, went missing there. They had been in Disney World at the time of Christopher's di disappearance. She says that she knew that she would never have taken him there. They also lived in the complex. Shane's father, James Walker, lived nearby, I will. At the time, Shane was 19 months old and Rosa was 35. She thought she could have never have children until she became pregnant with him. Who? She, I mean, I'm hearing. Yes, that's why they probably did that part. She called him her special boy. At the time of his disappearance, he would, he still was not talking. He was mostly sucking bottles. You know, he liked the teddy bears and monkeys. She loosely gave him rattles to play with so that she would be able to clean up the room. Rosa never cut Shane's hair. She always braided it up and put it, in, put it back. Yes, they probably took his hair. I'm hearing yes. She told him she was not going to cut it until he turned two. Sadly, she never got the chance to do that. She said she normally worked as a cook five days a week and had two days off. On those days off, she always took Shane to the park that was located in the complex. Okay. Um, there's some other kids, y'all. That, that they want me to do separate. Every year, the center has a Christmas tree for missing children. They hang pictures of the children on the tree. When they take it down, they send the pictures to the families. Rosa still had those pictures. She said it's confident to see him around in the pictures. She had fought and survived breast cancer twice. She hopes to find him before it's too late because of her son. Rosa had never given up hope. She feels that Shane is out there somewhere. She just has to find him. She hopes that one day he will wake up and come and find her. She says she will hug him and kiss him and take him away on a vacation just so they could be together. Okay. Allison says to Christopher, we never stopped looking for you. We never stopped. Who? We never stopped loving you. And we just hoping and praying that you're okay where you at. Inspector Lardell thinks there is hope that Shane and Christopher are alive. He says there have been many cases like Car Carlina's where kids question where they come came from and find out who they really are. He hopes that Shane who he hopes that Shane and or Christopher will do a DNA search and match with their relatives. He hopes that they will be able to reunite Shane and Christopher with their parents. This is the suspect though. Suspects. Christopher was last seen walking with an unidentified dark skinny black male. He will be between 25 and 30 years old. Six zero, tall and thin, with red lighted hair and a long pink scar on one cheek. Mm. There was one speculation that Christopher's disappearance was related to Allison's drug habit. Okay, you know, like helping the community. <clears throat> it was alleged that she either sold him for drugs or he was taken due to a drug debt. Although she admits that she used to lose cocaine, she denied that she owed anyone money or that her drug lose were related to his disappearance. It who extra notes. The case this case was first released on October the nineteenth, twenty twenty, as a part of the second volume of the Netflix reboot of Unsolved Mysteries. We should watch it. The case was also previously profiled on America's Most Wanted. Several sources state that Christopher was last seen playing with the same kids that Shane was last seen playing with. Okay, that could be suspect right there, okay, or something like that, or something else. Unsolved mystery researchers found nothing in the police report to indicate that this is true. Some sources state that Christopher's figure eight birth mark is on his back and that his brother's name is Louise and that the park was located on either 112th Street or 114th Street. Okay. And that's all the information they have of Christopher Dinsby. So I like to help with this case, y'all I, I don't do it for the fame of the money. I do it for this what I love to do. And to the real families of these victims, corporate America will set y'all up. Thank y'all. Peace. Be safe.